A few years ago, I started collecting with my son, and let me tell you, it is not the same hobby that it was for me. It's a very different experience for him. I won't lie, I get a little frustrated trying to chase all those numbered cards and autographs and shiny things. So I decided to go back to my roots in the junk wax era and rip some of those packs and go down memory lane just for me. So come along and join me. Uh, let's look at some of those old cards and see what we dig up. This, my friends, is my oldest Beckett that I have. So it's, uh, if you know me, you know my favorite player is Mark McGuire. I bought this back in 1998. I wasn't really collecting back then, but Mark came to St. Louis, and that's where we're at. That's our team. So uh, we got to see a lot of ball games with him, so I was gobbling up every single thing I could get, including this Beckett, even though I wasn't looking any cards up. So very cool little book. Um, I keep it put away. They've got this neat little uh, kind of full-page card of Mark McGuire uh, on that front page, and then even on the back side of that page, it's got his stats like it's a card. But this uh, this little edition of Junk Wax Fun is going to be about the Beckett. Sorry, I had to have a little fun there. That was his walk-up song in St. Louis, so that's how you knew Mark McGuire was in the house. So this is my favorite baseball card. Not the 85 Tops McGuire. This particular card is my favorite card of all time. It is the first big card I traded for. I couldn't tell you how many cards I gave away for it. It's honestly not in very good shape at all. I don't even know what it would have grade. But this is my absolute favorite card. It's my favorite card in the collection. I'm happy to have it. Um, you know, you would look in the Beckett to see what things were worth. Um, so that's what I did. I had to kind of find it in the Beckett. And I will tell you, the cards that I traded for this McGuire card. I didn't even look them up, man. I just blindly gave them away for this card. Um, so so let's uh, look up the uh, this uh, McGuire card in the Beckett. You, you know, it's really tough. You get all the arrows and all the different things, but we did find 85 tops. A lot easier to look up cards back in the old days than they are now. But we found 85 tops in the Beckett, and then we found our McGuire card. In 1998, they listed it high at $250, that's pretty cool. This is the very first card my son pulled, his first autograph out of a pack, okay? So uh, he was pretty excited about it. He was all worked up and had to come show it to me. Uh, and you know, he was 11 at the time. So of course he said, hey, was this guy any good? So uh, I said, hey, well, let's look it up, man. Let's see uh, what she got. Maybe you got something special here. So we go to the Beckett. This was the Beckett at the time. So yeah, it was. this one's a little over a year old, um, and 21, I believe. So when we went to hunt in here for the uh, card, it's pretty complicated, man. There's like all kinds of different uh, subsets and, and, and all these things that didn't make a lot of sense to us, okay? But we did eventually find um, the classics in there, but as you can tell, they're not. there's no Trevor Hoffman in there. So we're a little confused, like we didn't know what to do. So I got a little curious and decided I was going to look up some of these uh, junk wax cards that I had. I couldn't find that newer card. I was going to see at least what we could find in the old stuff. So this price card goes back to 1980. This makes me feel old, <laughs> but it is what it is. I remember how far back my old Beckett's went. Um, but we went on the hunt uh, for my absolute favorite card ever, right? That uh, the Olympic Mark McGuire card. Uh, so we did find that in the book in... Wow, look at that. It only lists at $25. So from 98 to 2021, it went down quite a bit. So we uh, could not find that Trevor Hoffman card. So you know, the next best thing, we look on eBay to see what the comps are. So uh, this is a common practice. So uh, three out of the four you know, social media users that, that are on card Twitter responded that this way they don't they don't use the Beckett anymore. They go straight to eBay to look for these things. So when we look up this Trevor Hoffman card, um, looks like there's only been one sold in last year and it went for about 15 bucks. So pretty underwhelming, but you know, I've never told him that. So what about my card, that Mark McGuire, that 85 tops that I like so much. So look that baby up. And of course you can find this on eBay. 
go they go much higher if they're graded obviously that's the uh, this is the way things are these days but uh, it looks like my rock card wouldn't it wouldn't only go for maybe a couple of bucks um, but somebody sold one for a few thousand dollars there but overall um, you know the Maguire card is still pretty popular um, it, it's 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 I wouldn't call it iconic but it's super recognizable um, so let's check and see uh, what the track the value of this one so on this particular card market value is $42 which not terrible whatever but you can kind of see the trend patterns there with the price and then there's been 5,000 of these sold in the last year so those things are still moving uh, so it's interesting uh, to see the, the stats are good to look at I don't know that you can get that out of a print Beckett and I don't use Beckett's uh, online services either so I don't know how good those things are but at least eBay you may not enjoy selling on eBay but at least you can enjoy um, you know the stats that you get and the, the information that they give you as much as it pains me to say it I think the era of the Beckett is gone uh, but I do still pick them up for nostalgic purposes, right? Because when I was a kid, that was the Bible, man. If you had uh, a dollar card and you wanted to trade it for another dollar card, you looked it up first to make sure it was right. Uh, and and that's that was it. There was no internet for me back then when I was 12. Uh, so that was the only way you could figure out what cards were worth. So it was a super useful tool back in those days. But now uh, the internet has kind of taken over and there's just way too much, too much input and uh, and data on prices for cards so much more complicated now than it ever was uh, for me as a kid yeah so don't throw away those old beckets people still collect those you know and they're probably worth something uh, on the market and especially to you so don't throw away those old nostalgic beckets i'm not throwing any of mine away but i definitely have new metrics to look at hey thanks for watching again and look out for our next episode